you ever stubbed your toe really, really hard? And you might have said a swear word or two. I know I have when I stubbed my toe really hard. That's okay because we become really aware of the situation at that moment, right? That's one of those moments you're really, really aware of your body experience. <laughs> But it's a relative experience, right? Because it's not a forever experience. Usually, by a few hours later, you've forgotten the whole thing ever happened. Usually. And certainly, by next week, you've forgotten it happened. And that's um, something we're going to talk about, this self-awareness um, and acceptance, because we are working through this book called Living Originally by Robert Brummett. And it's got... 10 tools or I don't know, tools, skills, whatever you'd like to call it, um, about personal transformation, which is a pretty great thing. And, and one of those is realizing that things like the stubbing your toe experience is temporary. And the real um, way that we know that we're okay, that who we are is by coming, because living originally, let me back up, is not about being extra special and different than everyone else, which you are. It's about living from your origin, from the truth of who you are, from your God center. That's what living originally is about. And so when we look to outer things like wearing the right clothes or liking the right people or whatever, that will never satisfy our being okay Yes, there's always something more, but when we live from our inside, then it will. So, the stubbing the toe is the living from the outside experience, if you didn't put all those pieces together. Uh, so, just to get us started on this deep self-acceptance, I'm going to read to you what um, Robert uh, wrote. Deep self-acceptance is simply allowing each experience to be what it is without interfering in any way. I am fully present with each experience without any resistance, analysis, interpretation, manipulation, or control. So, I stubbed my toe. It happened. I experience just what is here and add nothing to it. I experience each sensation, emotion, and thought completely, and then I let it go. To use a campfire metaphor, I don't attempt to extinguish the fire, but I don't throw any more wood on it either. I just let the fire burn until it burns itself out. Because <laughs> I've also done the whole thing like, why did I leave the chair there? If I hadn't left the chair there, then I wouldn't have if I'd been paying more attention. Have any of you gone down that rabbit hole when you've done, you know, some, it just is. So this is an internal practice for accepting your eternal experience completely. And I have heard people say, well, we just got to accept whatever it is and just be like, okay. We're not talking about your external experience. We're talking about just accepting the truth of the fact that what's going on within you is what's going on within you. And because we also want to act responsibly and ethically, kindly in the world around us, right? So self-acceptance is not about saying my way is the way or my viewpoint is the viewpoint. It's just understanding that it is. This is my viewpoint. And you may have another viewpoint. Well, you probably will have another viewpoint because that's how it works. And accepting that I'm having the feeling and the experience that I'm having. A lot of times we'd like to say, oh, no, I'm not feeling sad about that. Or I'm not feeling whatever I, you know, because it's not nice to feel mad at somebody or such and such thing happened a long time ago. Why are you still feeling sad? So self-acceptance is just about saying, yeah, these things are happening and I'm feeling them. 
because here's the trick. You probably already know this, but I'm going to say it because it helps us to remember sometimes. Because <laughs> when we pretend that we don't have the feelings, that we say stick around even longer. And they hurt even more because we're trying to say, oh, no, I'm... We just accept that this is where we're having right now. I'm feeling, I'm remembering, you know, you can have a loved one who's passed away years ago and then something will remind you. And if you just say, I'm feeling sad about that right now. And just be with it and let it be. Okay, I'm feeling sad about that right now. Not telling yourself you shouldn't. I'm just having that experience. And just walking through it. Because resisting is troublesome. Resisting puts a lot more energy into an experience when you don't need to have that energy put into it. And when you put that energy of resisting what is, <laughs> how often does that actually work, resisting what is? Um, you just create more suffering because now you're putting all that into it. If you just said, oh, I'm having this experience, okay. Um, sort of like quicksand. You know, what you're supposed to do if you fall. First of all, so I did some research on quicksand because I was going to talk about this. And that's what you do. You look it up. Um, fun fact, quicksand is usually not that deep. And if you don't struggle, you will probably only sink up to your chest. The problem is you might still be stuck there. And so it's still dangerous. However, we all know or probably have heard that if you find yourself in that kind of situation, you're not supposed to struggle, right? The more you struggle, the more you're wiggling yourself down into it. <laughs> Feelings are kind of that way, too. <laughs> um, and we can trap ourselves the other way, too. You know, we have feelings that we really we don't want, so we're trying to be, no, no, we're just... But we can also say, hey, this experience is so great. I'm going to hold on to it and squeeze it for all it's worth. And then I'm going to keep holding on to it long after the experience is completed. You know, I had such a great time that one time these three people and me went to this restaurant. I'm going to try to recreate it. And inevitably, it's going to epically fail because you're never going to have the same experience again. You'll have a different experience. And if you just let it be whatever experience it is, then it'll still be great or can still be great. But if you're trying to make it the way it was, oh, trouble, 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 trouble. So the more we cling to or need to try to make those things happen, the more trouble we kind, you know, we're, we're creating for ourselves. It's sort of resistance of what is. Once again, resistance of what is. Because we're not the person we were even five seconds ago. And who, would we want to be the person we were five years ago when we got to get, got together to d with dinner for those three people and it was so great? I don't want to be the same person I was five years ago. I think I'm pretty much more fabulous than I was five years ago. Going to keep getting more fabulous too. So, so if we use our awareness to recognize that we're having that feeling, maybe we're missing those moments, that doesn't mean you can't call up your friends and talk to them and do that, but just let it be okay. Because now is the only time we can experience bliss. So acceptance does not mean that we stay where we are or that we stop pretending that we're somewhere else. Wait, that we have stay where we are. Ah, there's a comma. Everything makes more sense when you look, pay attention to the comma, right? <laughs> when I... Um, when I, when I was 13, I broke my arm really bad. It went this way and then that way. It's pretty epic. Now the, the, the fire department came, or the fire department, the EMTs came and they hauled me off to the hospital and they did surgery and all of that stuff. And they, you know, they, of course they had to take x-rays before. And now this is a great, this is, you know, we're talking about self-acceptance of our inner journey. So this is an outer physical explanation of why it's so important. Because we could have just said, oh, no, my arm's fine. Of course, it wasn't. It was going like this. And it was, you know, 
kind of bleeding and getting gross and all that. And I was in shock. <laughs> but, um, and then the doctor had to take x-rays of it the way it was so he could see what he was dealing with. So all of those things were important parts of accepting where we were to be able to do something. And now my arm, you would never know the difference if I hadn't told you. And if you, you know, lots of times people don't notice that I got those great, awesome scars on my arm. Um, we would think it would be ridiculous to do anything other than what we did, what the doctors did and how we responded to that, right? <coughs> but we don't have our, that same kind of process for ourselves. If we have, I'm feeling sad, things are going on. I don't know what to do about this situation. Hmm. Well, we'll just pretend it's not happening. That'll do. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, your arm's like flopping into weird directions. It's just an example. So in our house, we have a little practice that we do when any of us are feeling not sure about what's to do or maybe we're caught in our own internal drama. Have everybody ever been caught in your internal drama? It's not super fun. But... We do it. And so we go to our, and usually we try to remember, let's, let's go to our inner wisdom. And I didn't realize how great this was. I mean, how I shared this with a friend of mine and she was like, wow, that's really insightful. And I was like, oh, well, it's just a tool we use all the time at our house. So here I am sharing it with you because somebody said it was really helpful for her. So I was like, okay. Um, we just say, okay, instead of doing this thing. I don't know what I need to do. Let's stop and ask our inner wisdom. And this is something Robert talks about in the book. When we live originally, we are practicing coming back to coming from our inner wisdom, our inner source of who the truth of who we are. And so sometimes when we get caught in our drama, we forget that that wisdom is available, always available. It's right there. So when we remember, we stop and breathe and say, okay, there's a solution to this that's different maybe or bigger than whatever I think is the, the three choices in front of me. What's mine to do? And inevitably, when you take that time to go within and be aware that all this stuff is going on and accepting all that stuff is going on and just saying, okay, what's mine to do in it? A greater solution than you had originally thought comes to you. It works. Try it. So, and it works, the more we practice, you know, awareness was last week, this week we're doing acceptance. I mean, they all fit together. You can't really do one without the other. They all build on each other. Um, <laughs> as you practice these things, this will become almost your default setting to be like, hmm, let me check that out. What's mine to do? Okay, that's mine to do. Because resistance, and then of course sometimes we know what's ours to do, and we really do know, but we don't want to do it anyway. <laughs> I have done that. Been like, yeah, I know that's the right thing for me to do, but I don't care. <laughs> but when we have resistance to the truth of where we are, or what we should, what we know is ours to be doing, I should not want to say should, but what is our best path? It's sort of like a log jam, right? And so that keeps all of the all their good just from flowing. As soon as we start accepting and feeling where we're at, what, what's going on, it's like pulling out whatever that one log was that was holding the whole thing together. And all sorts of stuff comes down. The good stuff and the not so um, pleasant parts sometimes. And it can feel overwhelming because you're like, wow, look at all these feelings. Look at all these experiences that I'm thinking about and feeling and having. I think maybe I'd rather like to go back to the way it was because it was much more comfortable. But, well, that's not the way to spiritual transformation. But you can choose that. That's okay. Um, and because this can be very uncomfortable, this is why we have each other. 
This is why we have spiritual community. This is why we have our spiritual practices of meditation or journaling and mandalas or whatever your spiritual practice may include to help us take the time away from external input to be present with our internal dialogue, which is not always comfortable, but usually insightful. It was pretty, I was driving down the road the other day, um, and I was listening to the radio, and the radio station, like, stopped broadcasting for, like, like seven minutes, and at first I was like, huh, and then I started thinking about my talk, because it was this last, last night that's happened. So I was like thinking about my talk, doo -doo 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 -doo, and I was like chewing on it and all that. And, and I had forgotten that, that I hadn't turned off the radio, like it was, that it was on, it just was broadcasting nothing, until he like popped back and I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, wow, look at all the stuff I got done when I wasn't having any external input into what I was doing. Um, it's a good thing to do every now and then, just turn off the radio. So as we go about our ordinary life, we simply notice our inner experience and don't argue that we're having it. Try not to argue that we're having it. We notice our discomforts and kind of maybe our compulsive or our unthought about reactions to things. And we notice without judgment. We just notice. And if we don't think that that's the way we want to behave in the world, then we can do something about it. But we don't judge what we've done. We just say, okay, well, the next me, the, the me from fi in five years from now is going to be more awesome than the me now, right? Yeah. I should hope so. So um, how do we get there? Well, we notice correct, course corrections, right? without judgment, because we don't want to put all the energy into it. And we, as we're going about our ordinary life, we go with the intention of remaining ethical, responsible, kind. And when we notice that we aren't, we make amends. We clean it up. We do something about it, right? So in our spiritual practice, remember we have... Um, uh, what am I, okay. My computer was misbehaving last night, so I wrote instead of typed and it's a different brain process for me. Um, so at the end of each chapter, Robert writes a few perils or things to watch out on on the journey, which I think can be very helpful because we've all fallen into that, well, I have fallen into to the traps that he talks about, some of them at least. So some of the perils of self-acceptance is that um, that tricky bit of us that might want to seem shiny and enlightened and spiritual and together. Have you ever wanted to seem together? <laughs> um, because it makes us feel comfortable or maybe we want to just look that way to other people. Um, whatever, that's or we want the right people to like us, or whatever. Um, and sometimes we don't even realize that. But this is one of the perils of separate, because you can make it be about looking spiritual to other people, and this is not about that. This is about your own process. And who cares what other people think about your process, because it's none of their business. Um, some of you know I use a, a meditation app on my phone because uh, it's got little bells and stuff and it's really neat. And it could be used for an internal practice or an external way, right? So I use my meditation app because it helps me keep accountable to me because I want to meditate every day for a certain amount of time. And because I have the use the app, it tracks that for me and that helps me know that I'm on track, that I'm on the track that I want to be. Um, and it's interesting because it tells me how many time, how many hours I've meditated since I got the app and stuff like that. And, you know, that's interesting, but I don't really care. Um, but it helps me keep accountable. However, you could use the app to say, look at all the hours I've meditated this year. Look at all the... 
look how spiritual I am because I'm using the meditation app. Now, some people like to say, I meditated today. How about you as a way to encourage other people to meditate? That's fine. But, you know, it's just something to notice. I'm like, you can use the same tool for to help you in your internal practice, or you can use it to be like, look how great I am. <laughs> um, and I will tell you, I mean, it gives you a little star after every... 10 days that you've meditated consistently, you know, it'll say you've meditated 90 days consecutively. And I'm like, that's awesome. Because I'm like, I'm on staying on track. And I'll tell you, I was a little upset when I, day 97 came and it was like a day when I was on planes a lot and I missed it. And I was like, <clears throat> there was a part of me that wanted to cheat and go in and add a meditation. I was like, no, it's really not about that. It's okay. We'll just go back to the beginning and start again. It's okay. Because it's not about that. It's just about getting back, keep going. And so, to reiterate, another thing that we can do is say that our um, acceptance doesn't mean that we ex let say that all things that are happening in the world are something we should just accept as they are. But like my broken arm, you need to know where you're at to be able to figure out where you want to go. GPS only works if it knows where you're at. <laughs> well, it only works well if it knows where you're at. <laughs> um, and so when we respond to our external world, it can still be part of our inner journey. Because if we see injustice... We may be led by our inner wisdom to make an action, to do something about it. Because we can't go after every single thing. And so we need to use our inner wisdom to help us know what is our step to do. What is our action to take. And we can be much more effective when we can come from that place of knowing we're coming from our God self, our original self, instead of from some ego part that needs to be like, I'm doing all the stuff. <laughs> so, living originally is about personal transformation. It's an inside job. There are no timelines. You're not expected to show up anywhere at any particular time or have made a particular amount of progress to have passed or get a gold star. There's no gold stars. Though if you really want one, I'm sure I can rustle one up. As so all I have to say is enjoy the journey. Go within. You're in the right place at the right time.